Hey everyone, welcome back to the next episode of the Beach Court Podcast. I'm joined back by Parker and Maddox. We're having a good time. I'm Eric Ridgway. I'm your host. We're going to run through the Louisville recaps of our tournaments because we haven't done that yet a little bit. Talk about the little results that finished today. Uh, we have a new champion, a first-time champion. Um, and we'll also talk about um, your cup meta. We'll, we'll run over some cup meta items and uh, give you kind of our picks and thoughts for your local cups as you're trying to increase your championship points. I got back from a cup today. I went one, two drop. So Lugia did Lugia things. That's all I'll say. I don't, I'm, and, and you know, cause I'm a little scared of commenting further. So, uh, but, that, but that's, that's all I'll say for now. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe we shouldn't take cup advice from you. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Maybe you shouldn't. You're, 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 you're probably right. Um, And anyways, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. And what are you guys doing? What, what you been up to? Who's traveling? Um, I was working. I was lamenting about not being able to go to this cup that Eric attended, but uh, alas, I was working. But uh, also just got out of the hospital again not fun but yeah that's so sad i'm sorry <laughs> yeah but you're it back. is what it I'm glad, is i'm glad you're feeling better and you're home yep yep things could be worse right it could be yeah but at least you're home Max, right, so what about you are you back yeah, in I'm, orlando I'm... with all the hurricane damage yeah but no hurricane damage for <laughs> no i mean no back 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 in florida um again been on the road for a little while missed y'all last week you know ldf did great in my place um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's been a lot of traveling around again, haven't been to too many locals or spots lately just because of all my travel, but, uh, I did get to a nice locals in DC, I guess this was, this was like weeks ago now. So I'm a little bit turned around on the name and, and the time, but had a great time up in uh, DC hitting a few locals and then, um, yeah, getting back to Florida, getting back to some locals here, kind of excited for that. Um, and you know, after Louisville, just kind of like, you know, excited to play the game more and already looking forward to surging sparks since, uh. My, I know the next major tournament I'm going to be going to will be in the Surging Sparks format. So looking ahead to that. And I know we're probably going to talk a little bit more on that in a future episode. But uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, exciting here. and uh, Excited to always like try the new lists that come out from all the tournaments from Lil. Already started looking at a few of those. Already trying to try, try a few from uh, Louisville. Been playing some Turbo Lost Box on the ladder. The game, the deck's kind of fun. I never played it when it was like really, really meta. And now I'm like, wait, this deck's kind of cool. Yeah. Lost, box, Lost Box is so back. Until Reggie Drago wins the tournament, and then oh wait, that happened no, today. <laughs> uh, though I remember like early day one on the stream, they had Drago versus Lost Box like at four zero, oh, no. and it's not like, even. Why did they stream that? The player played Manaphy, and like it still just wasn't even close. Like it didn't even come close. So I, I don't know why they streamed it. Uh, but yeah, Lost Box, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting deck. But like you've got to avoid the Dragos in the room to to have a chance. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Louisville first. Um, so we, as we talk about Lost Box, Michael Davidson finished second place to Caleb Gettimer. Uh Michael was playing Lost Box and Caleb was playing uh, Raging Bulk or Bolt or Raging Bulk, whatever you want to call this these days. Um, with three charms, we saw a lot of lists have three to four charms at this tournament. I know that's something Maddox has mentioned on this podcast before uh, about the meta. They needed you know, need the charms right now because of Terrapagos, right? Yeah. Um, so, what are your guys' thoughts on Raging Bulk getting its first dub? <laughs> and and also, what, what's your what's your thought about it being Azul's teammate when Azul has like hated on Raging Bulk for so long? I mean, I think like what Azul says and what Azul does is different. Like he he uh, it was always like, oh, Tina sucks. Tina's me. <laughs> and, then this, they, and then he played Tina in a tournament Tina. and almost yeah. won. Uh, but like, I don't know. He, he says stuff. Everyone says stuff. Um, the deck, I mean, no one can deny that it's good. It's just fast. It's strong. You hit a million damage, your opponent cries and the game's over basically. Um, but you know, like I, I am still kind of shocked to see it win an event, but I mean, when you're the same player playing, a deck that powerful, even though it is like as linear. I mean, like, you know, expect good results. Yeah. So 
for my take, again, Az Azul's, or well, first of all, on the Azul comm, right? Some great meta manipulation. And to Azul's <laughs> fairness, right? Like, you know, when we were prepping for Worlds with him, uh, Eric and I were prepping with him for Worlds, it was like, you know, Snorlax was a good deck to beat. We played the Professor Turo scenario on our Reggie Drago list, came up clutch, you know, it helped a lot. And, and eventually when I hit Grant Manley, like, it helped that. So some some team on team violence there. But like, but at the same time, honestly, when, when Raging Bolt won, I was like, actually upset and like angry because <laughs> everyone hops on these podcasts us included it's like oh raging bull's not good and then and here's the deck like i played raging bull and i see like man this deck's fun it kind of cooks oh it's linear but it's solid and i was like no nah, it's bad no nah, it's bad oh look at one hey wow you just give it to good players and it wins well no one gave the deck a shot <laughs> like like why like why why have we not spent the time exploring so anyways my resolve from here on out is to no longer listen to any uh, tier lists besides the Beach Park Hot podcast because no one knows what we're talking about. Just play the decks that's good and that you like and do your thing. Except the Beach Park podcast, maybe. No, definitely. Always. You, you, might, you might listen to our tier list. All right, that's good. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, honestly, here's the thing: decks, decks, solid. We know the deck is has a strong power level because it, right? It does that consistently. Anything that can hit, you know, 400 yeah. damage max on yeah. the first turn of the game, like you got to watch out for it. <laughs> People don't yeah. like it because it's linear, but at the same time, it's good. It's consistent. People have been sleeping on it for a while. I'm um, glad it's finally got the limelight. And honestly, I think we'll start seeing, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see some very strong testing groups roll up to LAIC with Raging Bolt just because the deck is good. You know what they say, when they sleep in on you, tuck them in. That's all I can say. You're right. You're right, Parker. <laughs> um. Anyways, so looking at the rest of the results from the top eight, um and louisville and i don't think we touched on this much during our last episode with with bass um sebastian finished uh top four with charizard take a look at our last episode he really breaks down some great information on how to play charizard ex in the current meta um so if you want for more information for that uh look at our last episode um but we take a look at that meta from the tournament and we had no thor 30 pointers make cut um and and, and just like Complete shock, right? I, I was in day two. Um, you know, you, you go to sleep at night, day one, you're like, yes, I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna, you know, I got the perfect deck for the tournament. I'm gonna go 4-0 and I'm 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 gonna make asymmetrical cut, right? And we had multiple people do that, Alex Shemansky, um, and there was uh Nathan Ginsburg as well. Both of those players ran the table in day two, got 30 match points, their resistance sucked, so they got 17th and 18th uh, because, the, you know, they came from the bottom table up compared to the other players, and it carries over from day one. So a lot of negatives happened around that 30-point bubble to make it into top eight. We had a lot of good decks. We had a couple Snorlaxes, a couple Charizards, um, a Lost Box, Palkia. What What is your opinions on the current state of the game, Parker? I know you've been playing for a very long time. Have you ever seen something along these lines of, like, a day two player not having a chance at making day two. Um, so in Pokemon, no. Uh, in other games, I guess in Magic, I've seen used as an example for some tournaments. I, I think it's a possibility. I think it's because I think there's is eighteen points to make it to day two, but sometimes only like x2 ones are able to make it into cut um but in pokemon no i've never seen anything like this um and basically from the start of the season i i kind of abhorred the new tournament structure because like why eliminate rounds and like the, i do like the idea of asymmetrical cut but like everything else about it i'm just not really a fan of yeah uh, but we'll have to see where it goes. I know a lot of people are, you know, even prominent people like Azul. Like he said, he put in a support ticket about it. Like, yeah. like I doubt they'll do anything this season to change it or, or maybe not even next season. But I think they do need to look, take and reevaluate, you know, the tournament structure. It's, it's just not a, I think it's just not ideal for really anyone except people that want to get out of there earlier yeah and hey, max what were your thoughts on on the what occurred in louisville i so i think what like again the case that we had where quick people quickly rise that hey there's a chance that people with 30 points that rent 4-0 in day two won't have a chance to make top eight and and that you know to me like 
it, it was just a big confusion system. Again, I do think that it was an anomaly in a, in a, in a sense, right? It was, it was the right number of people. We didn't have that extra round. Yep. We end up in this specific scenario. And of course the matches played out like they played out to get us in the scenario. I think there's like plenty of worlds where that doesn't happen. Um, but again, you know, just based off the numbers, this was a scenario where it did happen. Um, I actually commented on, um, I, I forget his name, but I think Chris, who's a, a director for play Pokemon who kind of asked for feedback and I had commented there. And my main thing was like, Hey, we just need clarity is the point, you know, is, was, are we saying that, Hey, we want people to go four Oh in day two and have a guaranteed into cut. Yeah. If, if the answer is yes, then, okay, well now, like then instead of saying we're going to do this cut and we're going to say the numbers and then leaving a situation for this, where it could be missed and just say, Hey, if you get the 30 match points, or if you get to number of rounds, you know, minus six match points, you're in cut. And, and they figure it out from there and they potentially add more after that. If they don't have eight people yeah. or, or, or they go things like that. Um, here is a little unclear. I think I think there's an okay world where we say, hey, you, you do have to do well enough to finish in that top eight to make it. I think here it's the confusion, and this is just something that people did not sure. expect to happen. Um, and again, people waking up saying, hey, I just need to go 4-0, um, where in right. reality it's like they in reality they didn't have a chance. Yeah. So – you know, well, I, I was like more round, I, and I and I like and I like more rounds of Pokemon, right? I yeah. was watching the stream game. I was like tie, 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 just because I, I like. Sure. I wanted to see more sure. Pokemon be played. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, th th this is kind of you know, the reality of the format. I think the less rounds, in, in a way, is okay just for timing. Um, mm -hmm. but I do I do miss the extra rounds of Pokemon just because I like to play the game. We all like to play the game. Um, but you know, I understand like business wise why we're saying hey, we are going to cut the number of rounds down while still keeping a competitively integrated tournament um and it's and it's an adjustment yeah I, mean, I think for me when it really resonated like i, w I was like okay with it right I again to your point like yes you have to do well enough to make top eight right and this just goes back to the tiebreakers and the money bubbles and all this nonsense that i've been like conveying over and over on this podcast over the last year like the fact that alex shamansky and nathan ginsburg went 4-0 in day two and didn't even make top 16 that that tells you there's a problem, right? There, there's, I, there's, I agree with 100%. there's, there's a specific problem that like you're telling me I should go play in your second day of a tournament when all of my games in day two, and I can't make top eight and I also can't make top sixteen. So the best I can do is seventeenth place. Like that's not a that's not okay in my book. Um, you know, people work way too hard for this. Um, you know, all of us included, and and. And the sentiments were definitely shown by, you know, Alex Shemansky on Twitter, and he was very vocal about it. And I, I think he had every right to be. But hopefully, you know, it's addressed soon. I've submitted a support ticket as well. I encourage everyone else, too, that, that disagrees with the current tournament structure to submit a support ticket um, about anything that, you know, with their thoughts uh, on what changes they, they recommend. Um, but, yeah, um, I also played in day two. Let's get to our tournament runs and kind of, like, break down what decks we chose to play, why we chose to play them, and and then how we did. Um, I'll kick us off um, just because it's easier. Um, I locked I, – I started testing Maridon a little bit, like maybe a week and a half after Baltimore. Um, and so I was talking with a um, friend of the pod, insert name, um, whenever my brain gets there. Mitch, Adam Reinhardt? No, not Adam. Uh, Sneaker Michael. Talk. Sneaker Talk. Oh, sneaker talk. There we go. Brain. All right, Christian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was talking in front of the pod, Christian. You know, he was like, playing Maride on and he likes it. I'm like, hmm, I'll try the Red Lake EV Max. That seems cool. That seems fun, right? Let's do some extra damage. You got the potential to like redu reduce damage. So I played a little bit and my win rate was very good. Like overall, I was winning a lot of games and I'm like, hmm, am I really using the Lucky V Max to its fullest potential? And some of the times it really wasn't very good. Um, so I ended up cutting that early in my process for Louisville, but like once I saw my win rate kind of skyrocket and I expected, um, Terrapagos to be very high in the meta and Zard to be coming down, um, that's when I decided to say, okay, I'm locking it on Maridon. I'm going to play this deck. I'm going to beat all the Lugias I hit. I'm going to, you know, beat the turtles hopefully that I hit. Um, and I'll take my chances against Raging Bolt. Um, and my tech for Raging Bolt was I cut the Arvin, sorry, I cut the Vitality Ban and played double Zapdos in my list. Um, I did, I think I did them going like three or four, um, went up against like three or four Raging Bolts. That that matchup, it, it's still tough. Like even, even with it, uh, it's a little tough. I'm loading my results. I went up against one, two. Yeah, I went up against four Raging Bolts and I went uh, three and one against them. 
That's pretty um, good. So Dang. the 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 um the double Zapdos helps a lot, especially when they weren't expecting it. Um, I, we didn't play Lost Vacuum in my list. Uh, Mitch played the same list as us. We were working on it. Um, but we probably play it now. That is more charms and on all the list. Uh, but the the deck is just very good. It beats Dragapult. Um, it can beat Turtle if you amp them first with a charm. They just like have almost no answer to that right away. Um, you beat in Lugia. You know your Charizard matchups a little sus. If you hit a Gardevoir, you're beating them. You know all the top meta decks like it felt pretty good into, except for Bolt. And your Bolt matchup was kind of like fifty fifty, right? Um, you play well and you do well. So I ended up making day two. Um, I I got paired into a Maraid on Mirror round nine. Um, I went two for 12 on coin flips on the weekend. Um, so I didn't get to choose first or second uh, 10 times out of all 12 rounds. Uh, so he won but the then, coin but flip. Wait, hold up, but you just, you, they just pick first and you go second. It's like sick. Hit double generator, <laughs> attach double turbo. Well, that's the problem, right? Like I wanted to go first most of the time. <laughs> like, oh, uh, so I was choosing blind first throughout the weekend. Mm. Um, but yeah, th that's why I play. Again, that's another reason why I played Maridon is because it's a deck that can go first or second, right? I think we realized kind of in Baltimore at the end of it, like it's a coin flip meta a little bit. Um, and the, and winning the Go coin flip is very yeah. important, right? So um, because of that, that's another reason why I chose to play Maridon because it can go first and go second and it doesn't really care. Um, yeah, I'm not doing like Bolt players, just blind choosing second. Like I was choosing first to get that extra energy attachment onto hands um, and say that I, f I find a way to win if I'm playing against Bolt or something. Um, but anyways, it was Marino Mayor. He chose second randomly, and I'm like, interesting. I think you should go first, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, so he chose second, and he got the first two prizer. Um, and then game two, I just break out of my mind. So we like we really didn't play. Um, I hit a raging bolt, beat the raging bolt. Then I hit my first Zard. Well, I, I tweeted about this. Nothing, but, nothing uh, you can do about it. <laughs> well, the Zard match is tough, right? We know it's tough, but when your opponent plays, I think a total of four supporters. And instant charges only once throughout three games and still gets two Charizards with a cape up every game. And I don't play vacuum. It's like I just I just can't beat that. So I took my loss there. I beat a guard for around 112 and I got 128th on the dot. Um but yeah, that was my tournament with Maridon. Um I still think it's a good deck. Uh Charizard's on the rise again, so that's probably why it's tough to play it right now. Um but anytime you feel that Charizard's a little low. Like pull pull it out, dust it out. I think the deck's very good. Um, it just has a terrible Charizard matchup. Uh, but if if Drago's going to be on the rise now, right, and Charizard should be back going back down, it's it's, it's a good time Maybe. to play it. Maybe. Anyways, I I rambled for a little bit there, uh, but that was my <laughs> tournament run in Louisville. Uh, Parker, what did you choose to play to Louisville, and why did you choose it? Uh, so I took Terrapagos. Um. I chose to play it because it's pretty consistent, um, usually, and um, it, it's like somewhat thought provoking, I guess, which are kind of the decks I like, where you can take, you know, like not a million different routes, obviously, but like there's multiple, you know, plays you can do to get to like a good outcome, kind of thing. Um, uh, it, most of it was like the consistency part though like all you need to set up is like a fan rotom and then like an s ball for your guy and like you're playing the game most of the time um so that's why i took that deck um i don't regret it at all um i think maybe if i could redo it i'd maybe play palkia dusknor just because like i was thinking about building it but i just never got around to it I I really just didn't have much time leading up to the event. Like life's just been busy and still is. But uh yeah, so round one, I played against Raging Bolt and I was like, okay, I know how to win this matchup. And then he goes, uh Teal Dance, attach a bravery charm, um, Sada to both things. Um, bench another teal mask, uh, attach another bravery charm, and I was like, oh shit. They watch the podcast. Which is what I was saying, like <laughs> if you just charm your odor pods, it makes it a lot easier. And so I had to play around all these charms by, you know, attacking with fan rotoms and all this stuff. But I managed to I get there. Um 
surprisingly. Uh, round two, I played against Dragapult, and he actually, I won the coin flip. Then he went, Hash to Radiant Alkazam Pass. And I was like, uh, like I have Turtle, DT, everything. He's like, okay. Uh, game two, he starts. Um, he gets a pretty good lead. Um, I actually don't remember exactly how I won this game. I think I I Onoed him. Yeah, I went I Ono, Dusknor the active take knockout, and he didn't have another energy on his like bench guys. Yeah. It's like he had everything like except energy attachments every turn. Um, and then like after I did that, he just was only attaching one and like jet headbutting. So I won from there. Um, round three, I played against Pidgeot Control. Um, I actually, so I had, I started Duskull and like research, but my hand was like Night Stretcher, Pal Pad, Rare Candy. So I was like, I can just sit on this hand. And like after two turns, he was like, uh, Eerie. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, so like now I have to research and like I, I could never, I just couldn't get back in the game after that. Uh, game two, he kind of bricked. Um, I was able to just manually evolve up the Dusknoir and then Rare Candy Dusknoir. I just had them out, so like any Mimikyu bench, I would just chop. I was just attacking with Fan Rotom every turn. <laughs> so like, it eventually just got there, and then game three, I just... I, I just... But you were touching DTEs to Fan Rotom and doing 50? No, I, I, I played one Jet. The one Jet, okay, you got the one yeah, Jet. Yeah, I played the one Jet. Um, and then game three, I remember was a good game. I don't remember exactly how I won. That's fine. Round four, I played against Blake Ray on Palkia Dusknoir, which if you get Greninja EX out twice, uh, I think you just auto win Terrapagos, unless they have just like the perfect answer back. But that's what happened game one. Um, I took a defensive play where I like had Terrapagos active and I... Uh, I was like, I could kill, I don't even remember what was active, but I was like, it's not worth it, I'll retreat. So I retreated it, and um, in his, like, four-card hand, he, like, got the prize catcher and, like, Greninja candy attach and stuff. So I was like, well, hey, whatever. Um, I had definite, like, routes to win game two, like, not yeah. saying I 100% would win it, but I... Uh, I went jet attached to Rotom, boss the Froki, and attack. And I didn't have a stadium in play, and I'd already picked up my prize. I had a DPL for it, and it cost me pretty badly. And then um, round five, I played against Roaring Moon. Um, this guy, he wasn't playing slow, but just the pace at which he moved was slow. He, like, his cards... Like carefully, yeah. Play an ultra ball. I was just like, I feel, yeah. I feel the slowness. From yeah. The description. <laughs> yes. Um. And he, um. He, I, I literally like fan rode him and then just passed for three turns and just scooped. I was like, yeah. And then game two and three played at the speed of light. Um. My vitality belt came in super clutch. Um. And then um. I was able to close it out by their in turns. And then uh, round six, the I played against Bolt. Uh, the whole series lasted about five turns. I got donked game one. <laughs> and then game two, uh, Fan Rotoms passed for three turns. Had almost the most insane Briar comeback ever, but I whiffed a catcher in deck. And then um, round seven, played against Guardi. Um... I How does that matchup game. go? Does that, is that, you think that matchup's favored? I think it's super favored for me, if I'm yeah. going to be honest, but I just drew just the game, yeah. terribly game one and game three. Um, it got to the point where in game three, he went uh, counter catcher. I was like, you're ahead in prizes. <laughs> <laughs> to Gardevoir. So I was like, um, not a good day. And then I lost that on Gentleman's Agreement. The Gardevoir, yes. And then and that took um, me out of contention at that point. Took me out of contention, yeah. And then um round eight, I played against a friend 
um, on Lugia, and I won the die roll, and my deck just decided to pop off. Just like double dust snore, attach, knockout, boom. Yeah, game's over. Um, so, yeah, that's just how it goes, I guess. So you finished top 256, uh, mm, right? Or where'd I you get? Finished, oh, you missed? I think I finished like 308 or something. Okay. Uh, so not so you, good. So you got points, though, right? Yeah, points. I have 40 points. Hey, but... I mean, points are points, man. Points are points. Yeah. You'll get that one good finish to make up for all these. That's nah, true. It's fine, right? Yeah. Like, he's going to get like a... He's gonna get like a top sixteen, and I know, then... that, was the, that was the points or points. I was like, hey, yeah, <laughs> y'all got points." <laughs> <laughs> um, Medics, what about yeah, you? I, 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 I can what jump in. I can jump into get? my forgettable <laughs> run real quick. Um, so so listen. So my piece was that going to Louisville, I knew I didn't have enough uh, practice time. I didn't have time to pick up a new deck. I want to pick something that was comfortable, something I knew very well. Of course, I've been playing a lot of Reggie Drago, playing it since the World Championships. Um, so I was like, "Hey, I'm just gonna send back Reggie Drago." Um, I didn't make the adjustments where I was picking up like the Isaiah Bradner, John Eng, like their groups list. Um, the one piece that we did tweak is that I wanted to go for a little extra consistency. Um, you know, jamming towers and is needed. Raging bolts will be down, right? Obviously, that was wrong. But anyways, what I ended up doing was taking the John Eng or Isaiah Bradner list and cutting the jamming tower to add that fourth earthen vessel. If you want to see my list, it's actually the list that Sebastian got top eight with with Reggie Drago. Same list. I did not do as well as him though. Um, I won't go into too much of my time in the run, but like. Some of my first few games, I had some very, very just like unlucky, unfortunate draws. Uh, you know, my first set against Dragapult, for example, a matchup that I feel that Reggie Drago is very extremely favored in. Um, you know, like, you know, I, I missed the turn to attack, so I just had to pass for a turn, and then Dragapult was able to set up, start getting, getting some damage, and kind of was able to win the game from there. Um, game two, I missed turn one Drago. Finally get to a turn three Dragapult. Finally get to turn three Reggie, Reggie Drago attack. Somehow I win that game. Uh, and, then, and then game three... Again, one of those things I missed turn one Drago again. I'm clawing my way back and basically like managed, you know, he, you know, the, the player I was playing against with 10 cards in hand went, you know, double Dracloak and plus like draw and still missed Ultra Ball or boss or Ultra Ball for fish for boss. Um, so it just has to smack into me. So now I go cure him and board wipe him of three piece completely. But at this point, like I'm out of resources, he's out of resources, time is running out. So have a, have an odd tie there. Um, so I was like, it was, was that it was round one? Like, that was just round one. Yeah, that was just like <laughs> weirdly encapsulated. I was like, okay, favorite matchup. So I'm not going to tie, but I had him board wiped, but we didn't have enough resources to actually continue playing the game. Um, hit a loyal three deck. That's the benefit about going 001. You hit f cool things like loyal three. Uh, the person had never seen the Kiram for, for six strategies. They're very mind blown when I pulled it off <laughs> two games back to back. Um, but I mean, but the, kind of the kind of the run kind of spiraled from there. You know, hit a bolt, hit a Lugia, uh, you know, hit hit another bolt. By then, I'm like, you know, well out of it. Um, you know, ended up with a three-two-three three finish. Uh, by the end, some of these ties were just like, you know, the last game was like playing against Gardevoir. I int and lose. <laughs> they they int and lose, and then game three finishes without enough time left. I was like, okay, like where game three doesn't finish, like all right. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty, I mean, yeah, pretty, you know, I, I played a, I won a, I think I won a Drago mirror and the other game I won, uh, was I beat a Snorlax in 18 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I, so again, I, I, you got anyone who hates Snorlax out there. I got your back. Um, game one, game one, I, I go first. I do, you know, my Drago things. They go like, Hmm, turn one eerie. I'm like, Ooh, not an Arvin. Love to see that turn one eerie. They hit a switch or whatever. Um, and I just like pass and I'm like, all right, cool. Boom, 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 boom. Here Dragon Bolt see for game. Whatever, yeah. Um, and in game two, you know, they get set up a little more. They have a little bit back and forth. You know, I'm I'm able to just kind of like pepper damage on with Dragapult on the Snorlaxes. Um, I eventually use a Cologne to retreat. Uh, I still have Legacy Star at this point. I think I only had like two or I think I had still a Prime Catcher available. Plus I had uh, three prizes left. So I'm like, you know, I should be able to have enough resource to close this out. Um, they make a little bit of a mistake where they go and grab their Switch Cart, you know, uh, heal off a Snorlax, but not out of range. So they basically, you know, they they actually they had a so they they pushed their Snorlax active with like twelve damage on it. They had a Mimikyu on the bench, and I had Cologne Prime Catcher in the discard and Gus to something else. I'm like, all right, uh, V Star Cologne Prime Catcher board wipe for game. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm good. And it's funny. I, and and Chad, it was a cool opponent. You know, I, I ran into him the next day. They're like, oh yeah, right after a game with you, I dropped. I was I I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> so I was like, but uh, so anyways, end up with a forgettable three two three run. Um, again, Reggie Drago's solid list. Obviously, we just saw it one lil. Um, I think the world piece is, you know, I picked a deck that I was comfortable with um, because I didn't have time to prepare for anything else, really. I think really, you know, again, given my amount of preparation into the tournament, 
you know, I, I, even though I did have some bad matchups and some unluckiness, I wasn't as comfortable in the Raging Bolt matchups and the Lugia matchups as I probably should have been if I wanted to have a chance to win those games. So, um, again, you know, onward and upward. Uh, we'll see you all in Surging Sparks format for uh, some, you know, some better runs. I will see you guys in LAIC. I will not. I know. I will also not. But um, it's fine. I'm, I'm going to run back right on probably. We'll see. Um, okay. Uh, so let's jump into uh, talking about Lil um, and the meta and how it's evolved and the results of Lil. Um, there was a regional in France this weekend. Um, and James Cox took it down with... Reggie Drago V Star, uh, the same list Max just references with, with the jamming tower, um, mm -hmm. instead of the vessel. Um, but let's just take a look at kind of how the meta evolved, but from Louisville to Lil. So in Louisville, uh, the top six decks were uh, Raging Bolt, Terrapagos, Dragapult, Lugia, Drago, and Palkia V Star in that order. Um, and we saw in Lil, we saw Raging Bolt, saw Lugia jump up to number two. Uh, we saw Charizard come back onto the graphic at number three at 10%. Uh, we saw Palkia, um, Drago V-Star, and Dragapult um, drop a little bit down to 8%. So um, Terrapagos fell all the way off the graphic, off the day one um, top six chart, and Charizard replaced it. Um, I think that kind of like goes off of like Sebastian finished very well, deck was doing well. Um, so... Inherently, what we saw this tournament was because Charizard's back a little bit um, and Trapagos fell off, then Reggie Drago did better uh, because if he sits on Charizard's a little bit, right? It's constant meta evolution. Um, and, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. So I'll just take a look at the results of Lil. What do you guys think you will see going forward? Um, I know let, next week we'll talk about Gdansk meta a little bit more um, before that tournament. But what, what do you see the meta shifting, um, you know, next next week and the week's coming up um i think an interesting thing to point out that in top eight of lil there were no dusknor decks there were no dust um decks. i don't know how that'll affect it i think lugia you have to go all the way down to 13th for a dusknor deck yeah and it's the only one there actually but uh i think that you know lugia is gonna be Always present, always flapping its big wings. <laughs> Except today um, for me at the cup. Oh. That is true. <laughs> uh, I think. Did you I even think bench this... a Lugia V. How are you supposed to win a game if you can't bench a Lugia V? Exactly. Yeah, you know. Um, I think that Drago will go up. Uh, that this finish is kind of like what will give people the confidence to pick it back up. Um, yeah. it is a deck that still does some work not rely on going first but you know like your win rate goes up a lot if you go first but um i, I think that you know i think what were there three in top eight uh there was eight. three in top eight and there was yeah. five in top 16 yeah like uh, i think that's a pretty good sign that people are gonna you know be picking it back up and you're gonna hear uh you know, legacy star for prime catcher, Clone. whatever <laughs> energy switch. Prime catcher, you switch, yeah. Yeah. So what um, you're saying is we should play Lost Box right now? Um. No. No, you play Lost yes, Box with no. four pal you pads. Yes, yes, but no. <laughs> Lost Box with four pal pads. Here's the problem. So I've been playing Lost Box on ladder, right? You play a Pokestop build. So I've literally gone like pokey stop away a Colrus and then get turn one Kiram. I'm like, I can't, I can't do anything about this. I didn't have a chance to respond. I didn't even get to play the Colrus. I just milled it. So, um, yeah, again, like, you know, Reggie Drago, we know it's been a good deck. We've been talking about it, you know, kind of having a, an opportunity for a resurgence. I did not expect Reggie Drago to have the bounce back performance right after a big raging bolt win. But again, I don't think too many, uh, people are going to pivot their deck choice really. Yeah. Um, but again, also right. A sneaky four Lugias in top 16 and a two Snorlax. So, again, there's still some decks to watch out for. Again, if Lugia continues to see the play that it's going to be seeing, you know, Reggie Drago's going to have a very, very hard time. Honestly, with this many Lugias around, I'm surprised that Reggie Drago did that well. Did yeah. so well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Alberto Conti beat Ethan Wild in top eight. Um, I talked to Ethan after, and um, sneak peek for those of you that are listening this deep into the episode, he'll be on next week to talk about his run a little bit deeper. Um, and the Kadance meta. Uh, but 
Um, he said that turn one, uh, sorry, game one, he lost the coin flip, um, kind of sprawled from there. And game two, he missed turn two V-Star. Uh, so uh, Lugia did Lugia things for him on game two, it sounds like. But obviously Lugia is just always going to be there. And, and let's just not forget about the other deck that was in finals. We saw a Dragapult in finals, even though it did not put on any kind of performance game two or game three. Um, it was a brick fest for them in finals. But um, Dragapult still very good deck. Uh, he chose to play the Pidgeot version. Um, instead of like just like the the hard Rotom version, no maybe engine engine. Yeah, may maybe he should play box order instead. Boxed order, as seen in uh, Sander, right? You know, known <laughs> fantastic control player, uh, playing a, an interesting build of Snorlax, and instead of opting for this normal Rotom V engine, uh, played a heavy <laughs> count of boxed order. And uh, do y'all know what boxed order does? Box order lets mm -hmm. you put any two cards on top of your deck, and it ends your turn. It's cipher cipher meaning is code breaking. And end your turn, right? Oh, reveal a, I thought it was your deck hand. For, your deck for two item cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, and your turn. Oh, yeah, God. Your hand. Dude, yeah. So, right, so you can go and grab your Pokey Gear and your Counter Catcher. Uh, you know, so in, in, in a situation for Snorlax, again, it, it, it gives you a lot of flexibility if you're able to keep chaining those. Bro, I didn't know with the hand. Yeah. I thought, like, was one on top of the deck. We can even do some little puzzle time stuff, right? You can go and grab a boxed order for, like, a Counter Catcher and boxed order to start chaining them back to back. <laughs> Um, and also, I know I don't do the trivia, but I'm going to surprise Eric with the surprise trivia section here. Uh, Box <laughs> Order has two other limitless entries prior to this. Jared Grimes. Okay, and yeah, what and what's so Jared Grimes, friend of the pod, played it in his Chen Pao deck. What other deck archetype played Box Order besides Chen Pao? Correct. Oh, can you tell me what regional it occurred at? Los Angeles Regionals. Los Angeles Regionals. Uh, and as normal, Parker. you and Parker can work together on this. Yeah, I mean, Parker, it's got to be like an evolution deck. I didn't go to LA. I don't go to West Coast Regionals. I didn't, I didn't go to LA either. Um, um, what evolution deck besides Chen Pao would want that? I think it's got to be some control deck. No, nah. nah, it could be like so. a... I feel like... This is like a very Mike style question, like that he would ask us this question if it was like one of his favorite decks. So it's either it's either Mu V Max if it was in format. And Los Angeles Regionals twenty twenty four. Was it? I mean, I don't. I don't. No. It wasn't. Box, so, box order is an H block card. Okay. Unfortunately. Mu -V All right, so that's fine. So so that means it's not in Zorak either. Interesting. So that was my other guess. True. Um, Lou here, baby. Where you, where you go, Ultra Ball Jock? <laughs> Your go button. Well, you can't grab item cards. You only grab item cards. Oh, item cards. Grab a robot or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't have any guesses besides what I just said. All right, any guess at all, Parker? Are you giving a guess? You stick with Lugia as the guess. I feel like it's Lost Box or some shit. Like, like. All right, let's go Lost Box. I'm I'm down. Right. Lost Box. Nah, it was Bane, y'all. It was Lugia. Sergio oh, Salas, 208th no. place, played three boxed order to combo with four Ultra Ball, four Capturing Roma, three Great Ball, one Master Ball. So he got the Master Ball. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so shout out to Sergio. Okay. Interesting. For the order fans. And this list is kind of, you know, a 4-3 Cinchino line, 3-2 V-Star. Mm -hmm. uh, played the Squawk, again, the boxed order. To yeah. help you find your Master Ball and your Ultra Ball, most likely. Um, honestly, kind of an interesting combo. Yeah, so, I'm definitely down to like play some Snorlax box order. It's gonna be interesting. Like, I was, it's just so funny. He's like, I can just like see Sander at home. He's like, mm, what should I play this week? Control sounds awful. Why does it sound awful? Because I mean, everyone's playing Spirit Tomb. Hmm. What if I didn't lose the Spirit Tomb? <laughs> Only Sander, man. I know he's played that trade Pokemon too, the Life Heart. He's he's cooked some decks. Um, anyways, so we don't have the full day two results yet, um, from Lil, um, but I do want to shout out to Luke Kirkham. He's been Gouging Fire's biggest, like, warrior, and he finished top 16 with Gouging Fire. Um, uh, so any deck can do it. I mean, I think we've said this over and over and over on this podcast. If you're comfortable with a deck and you think it's good and you know your matchups, play it. Like, there's no reason not to play it as long as you're comfortable and it's good enough. You know, document your win rate, right? Make sure that you're winning games and, and then go from there.
Right. So, we saw it with Yell with Goldengo. We saw yeah. it here, right? I mean, it, and you know, there there's lots of cases. We saw a cloth yeah. and, and joinville. I mean, right, you know, like th- <laughs> these decks will show up and do well, especially if it's if it's a deck that you know and that you want to spend the time on, you might just become, you know, yeah. the face of that deck. There was a cloth at 7 0. Um and and Lil. So deck's just good. <laughs> Anyways. Let's move on to our trivia. But before we do, we've got a big announcement for everyone. Um, so we mentioned it previously on our podcast. Uh, the Comic-Con is coming up. It is coming up super fast. It is November 9th and 10th. I think we're about three weeks out. Tickets are already on sale. I will have the link in the description below. But the time to register is now. And if you're a supporter of this Beach Court podcast and you're listening to this, we have a special offer for you. You get $10 off by using code BEACHCOURT when you check out for the two-day gold pass. Um, so $10 off, pretty good. Um, that'll get you a special in the Comic-Con grab bag, and you'll have no waitings in lines um, for like the meet and greets, as well as you'll get one additional raffle ticket in the Nintendo Switch raffle. So if you're looking to win, win Nintendo Switch, Switch, um, you can come out and have fun in the Comic Con. For those of you that don't know, last year we did Battle of the Elite Four, and we're bringing it back this year. So uh, you'll be able to battle against me, Parker, and Maddox uh, for your chance to win Surging Sparks packs. Uh, that is an additional five dollar entry to compete in that challenge, and you can do four entries per day. Uh, but you'll face the Elite Four. And if you get one win, you get one pack of Surging Sparks. If you get two wins, you get three packs of Surging Sparks. If you get three wins in a row, you get eight packs. And if you beat all four of us, you get a booster box of Surging Sparks. Um, everyone wants to get their hands you know, on that. So register now using code BEACHCOURT to get $10 off the two-day gold pass and battle us here in Jacksonville, Florida on November 9th and 10th. Um, and again, the description will be posted in this episode on YouTube, as well as we'll promote it on social media as it comes closer. Last year was a lot of fun. I had a good time. Uh, are you guys looking forward to Comic Con? Yeah, it was a it was a blast. I mean, I I loved going to cons before. I think we even mentioned that like on yeah. the podcast that yeah, I just loved going to cons before. But yeah, super yeah. excited. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Sean's doing a great job there, and and just you know. All, all the events, right? You know, now we've been working with Nakama for over a year, right? We've seen already started to see like the yearly events like come and go. It's like each year they're getting bigger and better. Um, and we know Nakama Con is going to be that too. And excited to be back there with y'all, have a chance to play and compete, and uh, you know, have to try your best to go win some surging sharks, uh, surging sparks booster box. Yeah, again, you do have to bring one deck, and you can only use that one deck for your four matches, and you have to win all four in a row. And if you lose one, you're out. Just like when you play Elite Four in the game. Um, but let's move on to our, everyone's favorite segment, our trivia. Everyone every week's like, Hey, we got to do trivia. We got a new set coming. I saw some tweets today. No. About- <laughs> 16 EX is final answer. Go. <laughs> no. What's the, what's the question? What's the well, question? Well, I'm not going to give you that question because I saw a post on it today and I was scared you guys saw it. So I couldn't go with that question. Um, but you're welcome Boy. to guess how many EXs there are for content purposes if you want. Did anybody see the tweet? Here's a 16. Start. Parker, did you see the tweet? I did not. I did Let's not go 14. Tweet. It is 18. 18. Oh my gosh. It's oh, a big geez. set. But that was okay. That wasn't the question. What is our question? Because but your no question co- is there are how many new A specs and what are their names? Oh god. Um, okay, okay, we got the little, we got the little, we got the little, uh, a dump truck trolley that like the Reggie's all hop in and go ride because you know, yes, fill your whole board. search all your basics. Uh, I, uh, I'm uh, not uh, if you if you explain them, I will give you the names. That's precious trolley, okay, okay, and then there's, precious uh, trolley, there's the brilliant blender, there's brilliant blender, discard there's... five cards from your deck. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember, God. I remember because it was like the, the alliteration. We got BB brilliant blender. Wow. Um, what's the other There's ones? Megaton Blower. Is that the name? <laughs> yes, that is the, the name. Fan. Yes. Yeah, that card's kind of cool. Um, there's a... Ah, crap. Um... <laughs> no, there's, um... And there's nothing that good in it, right? I mean, those are kind of the main ones. Are there other bad cards? I mean, the Blender, the Trolley, the Lugia Tech. There's, like, five of them, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's, sure. like, two more, yeah. 
Um, okay, I'm trying to think. Oh, um, wait, no, I was like, it's like, oh, what deck? Like, oh, in the Cellar Dirge deck, you're playing. Oh, wait, you play the Blunder. Uh, <laughs> are there what other tools? I mean, there's not. I mean, what you don't have Crystal, the the Lux Bomb that's already out. Um, is it? Yeah, the Lux Bomb was in Stellar Crown. No one plays it. That's why you don't know about it. But there yeah, that's is, yeah, yeah. There is one tool. There's a tool. Um, I'll give is you it that. A cape? Hint. Is it a head glasses? <laughs> is it a? Is it a shoe? Are you not watching on YouTube right now? Or missing Parker going through it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, give me, give me something, Parker. What, what, what decks are coming out that people play? <laughs> Or what? What are there's Pikachu? What? What? What are they playing in Pikachu? There's the Pikachu. Got, I don't know. Probably like Prime, Crystal, Prime Catcher. Prime Catcher. Yeah, Prime Catcher. No. No. Let's be real. I remember uh, the first was like, "Oh wow, unfair stamps out." People don't even have to play Prime Catcher anymore. Now we're like, "Ah, let's just all play Prime Catcher." Yeah, let's all play mm-hmm. Prime Catcher. There, oh, 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 oh! Uh, Rich Energy. Attach Rich. it. Draw four. Is that what yes. it's called? Oh, yeah. that. It, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Enriching energy. Yep. See, Enriching. listen, everyone. Right. Okay. If you just if you just fill time and talk on the pod long enough, answers will come to you. So mm-hmm. yeah, you'll yep. you'll eventually. <laughs> That's why, like, if you're you know when you're when you're at work or you're in class, you know the answer. Just start talking and blabbing for two minutes, and you'll eventually come to us. All right. So you're at four. Uh, is the is the one that's like a double verse seeker the set or next set? Oh wait 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 that is in the set. Wait, we is it a tool? That's wait. A miracle headset. Miracle headset. Yeah, there's a headset. Actually, we I I think I said in my mind there. Wait, right is that the tool? Wait, than, is that the tool? No, name? Tool. Well, no, well, no, it's a it's an item. It's a VS seeker. Why is it a called miracle, miracle headset? headset? Because it's it's you're you're calling you're calling in your friends for backup and not one but two show up. <laughs> the miracle is that you have two friends, Parker. <laughs> True, true, true. Oh. Um, are five. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what's the five. what's the tool? I feel like there's there's there some any? there's some there's some good card. I'm sure that we're forgetting. There's definitely um, two good cards. You're two forgetting. good cards. <laughs> They're actually good. People will play these cards. Probably. Uh, is that card that, that card I want to throw in Goldango in this set? Oh, the oh yes. That searches uh, all the uh, energies. Not, yeah, superior energy search. <laughs> it's energy search. Pro. Oh, yes. Energy search pro. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, one of each energy. I think you should be able to grab a fairy energy with it. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. What's True. The what's the tool? What, Dude, what, 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 what what's something a that a tool can do? Survival brace already exists. You can already add more HP. I don't even know what this card uh, does. You can. Attack I mean, is there for anything, free? If you get, is there if you get, something? If you get attacked, do you deal damage uh, back or something? That's no. a pretty cool card. If you attack damage, I don't, uh, if you if you disc if you <laughs> discard energy from the card, it you no know, like that's just power glass. Right, attack so for free. You, you guys don't know the tools, so that's fine. You got any other ones? There's more. I, I, there better not be any more. I I doubt we have what anymore. six. There cannot possibly be more ace picks. Are you guys Ooh, done then? Six or six or seven? You giving up? Six. That that's already like three more a specs than I thought they were. In this. <laughs> All right, I'm I gonna call it. I'm gonna call it here. Cooked Parker. It sounds. I'm gonna call it. I'm. You guys sound like you're at six. Uh, you know, there's a tool. Yeah, we'll add in two. Uh, more, I gave you that. Two. I didn't plus tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, there is eight total. So if I give you the plus two, that that is correct. <laughs> the two that you were missing was Amulet of Hope. If oh, that's a Pokemon exactly. this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon. Search your deck for up to three cards and put them in your hand. Then shuffle your deck. You can attach a Radiant, Radiant Jirachi, Jirachi to your active to your... Pokemon. You can get five cards. Oh. be kind of great. Um, wait, no, wait, and... wait, wait, isn't, wait, isn't the Amulet three cards? Yeah. And Jirachi's three cards. You attach a... Oh, you get six? Jirachi. Oh, so Jirachi is six cards. <laughs> and then they right. just stable it. Yes. And the one you forgot, Parker, I'm going to give you a hint. It's a reprint. Oh yes, the goat. I remember. Oh, scramble switch. There you go. Yeah. Hey. Okay. All right. So you guys got there eventually. Uh, congratulations. But yeah, there is eight A specs in this set. Holy can't wait moly. to play Prime Catcher next. Set. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, can't wait to you know put all of these in the binder. <laughs> well, you're gonna get them. I'm not even gonna get them, bro. Oh yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> I'll just pick them off off the floor at locals <laughs> two weeks in. Be in the trash can. Anyways, uh, 
People that play that in Goldango, by the way, are like trolling because it makes your deck oh, way less consistent. What? No, it's good. I, no. I think there's. Yes, I think is. there's valid. You're at a, oh, wait. Well, why is Raging Bolt so good? Oh, it's because it hits a bunch of damage quickly. Oh, let me. Introduce I'm just saying Yoda. because like you, you want your waters for your Palkia and you want your metals to attack. No, that's fine. But they play ten energy normally. You just play one. Uh, you play thirteen right. energy. You play one of every energy, except yeah, you play. Three, we play. Yeah, you play three waters and you play two metals. I just said they play ten energy, energy, not thirteen. Yes, yeah, so an hour up to no, eleven. Playing energy. thirteen, no. three waters, two metals. That's nah. all you need. <laughs> nah, it's bad. Trust. You play Gladian, it's fine. Iron Catcher too good in that deck. True. Anyways, <laughs> let's move on. Let's talk about cup meta. So everyone's got some cups right now. I think Max for you, it's definitely like your kind of downtime before Toronto. Let's talk about like cup meta. Um, we're not going to like break down your cup meta. What we're going to do is kind of talk about evaluate what we think the meta is. We did a little bit with like talking about how, what's going to change, you know, with Reggie Drago doing well. Um, but let's kind of like talk about some decks that we like and what we, what our thoughts are for your local cups and tournaments that you're going to between now and your next major. Um, so Parker, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on the current meta game and what are you lining up when you go to our cup? I would say it is not my favorite format that I've ever participated in, but we've definitely made it worse. Um, if I was to just run cups, I'd be choosing Terra Pecos. I'd choose Reggie Draco. I think the best deck for most people to play for cups, though, is just Raging Bolt. It's just, it's just always strong. You win the game. Shout out to Chris Servos for winning the cup today with Raging Ball. True, 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 true. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's just usually pretty consistent. Um, I do like Maridon for cups too, another deck that's just consistent. Um, and then you could always bet that people will just play Lugia because it also, if you just draw the combo, you win like 80% of your games. Um, or if you bet so, to Lugia, yeah. Yeah, if you bench a Lugia and, you know, <laughs> do all that stuff, you probably win, like, 80% of your games. Yeah. Well, you can always boxed order for your Master Ball. Uh, like, that's why my list sucked. Away. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have cut the extra Nest Ball for a boxed order. It's my bad. True. Um, I think I think that the Arvin decks are pretty good at Cups, too. Like... They're a little scarier to play in general just because Dusk and Aura exists and all this stuff. But, like, I'd say, I mean, not me, but most people find, you know, either an Arvin or a Poffin or an Iono to get Poffin, like, pretty much most of their games. This coming from the last guy, last cup he played, he won. So, mm hmm. Yeah, and everyone didn't hear two episodes or last episode or two episodes ago. Parker's like, "Man, I played Charizard and it was awful." <laughs> but I won. won. But it was awful, oh, it, <laughs> dude. No, it was off. Telling you. No, my experience today <laughs> with Lugia was awful, and I didn't win. <laughs> See, everyone, this is just like the podcast is nothing different from your group chats at home, where everyone is just complaining about how bad their cup run runs went. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean, for me, when it comes to cups, like the again, kind of you know, to Parker's point, I think some of the decks I'm looking at are those highly consistent decks. So, Raging Bolt, that's a deck that you know how to play, it's a deck that's straightforward, has a simple path. And I think that if you're playing it at a high level and you know, sequencing like you need to, you're gonna have like a pretty good time. Um, and again, just it has such a high power level and such a consistency to it that you're able to pull off a lot. Um, you know, some of the spicier plays, right? I do think the Arvin decks, I think really like Charizard right now. Again, you know, Charizard and Best of One, if you're playing a very consistent build of it, especially something like Bass uh, Lashman, who again, we had on our last episode, but, you know, playing that three Nest Ball, you know, just the more consistent counts of cards and saying, hey, I'm going to put myself in a strong position to be able to go first comfortably, set up. And again, Charizard just has this inevitability to it, right? Even if you're playing against Raging Bolt and they can get going and they're able to go and, you know, you know, put a lot of pressure on, or you're playing against a Tropagos or a Palkia, is able to, you know, go and do an early board wipe. If you can stabilize and get back to that, you can create a board at the end where you just have, you know, a 330 or 430 HP Charizard sitting there swinging for 300. And a lot of decks don't really have a great way to deal with that. So, you know, if you're able to set that up, and again, I think the key is just consistent, 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 whatever list you're playing, make it very, very consistent. 
Um, now, if you know you're not going to run into any Reggie Drago or Lugia, a deck that I've really been liking playing is Turbo Lost Box. Surprisingly, surprisingly good matchup spread. Again, very difficult deck to play and I think has its own consistency issues. I was playing a set for fun against a friend and, you know, in our two out of three, I lost two of the games just because I went, you know, start non comfy attach pass <laughs> and, you know, got and, and and just, you know, could never recover from from either the early donk uh, or, or falling behind. So a little bit of consistency issues. Um I think you know you can go bring a cup. You can bring a deck to a cup that will run hot, and you can have a good run with it. Something like a Lugia, something like a Turbo Lost Box. I think there's a lot of merit in just saying I'm going to bring a very consistent deck, a Charizard deck with four Nest Balls and four Poffin, a Reggie Drago. Oh, sorry, not Reggie Drago. Reg, I mean Reggie Drago is not consistent enough, unfortunately. But a Raging Bolt that can be very consistent, and maybe don't play all four charms. Maybe if you're at a cup, just play two or three, and keep some of those other consistency cards. So, yeah, I think I think your cups are going to be a lot of <laughs> Raging Bolt. Uh, some Reggie Drago, some Lugia, some Charizard. Kind of got to be ready for anything. So if you have that spicy play that you know very well, like we were saying, like with our Gouging Fire Warriors uh, or whatever that deck is, you know, playing what you know is, is yeah. always, always going to be a good play too. Yeah, and that's kind of what I would agree with that. Um, I mean, I think the decks to beat are uh, Lugia, Charizard, and Raging Bolt. Um, and Reggie Drago is like not far behind that, and so is Dragapult. Um, so those decks are tough, um, but if you know your local meta and you don't think there's gonna be a lot of Lugia, a deck that I would suggest I've been having a lot of fun with, if you're like, want to have fun and compete, uh, Clough, Clough is very good. Um, people, especially against like Charizard decks in a cup, like in a best of one format, they just go, all right, I'm just gonna put a Charmander here and you're going first. Cause I think you should choose blind first in most matchups because of this. Um, you just go sick. Nest ball for Petrant, put it in the active. Baby Petrant. Uh, yeah, yeah, baby Petrant, put it in the active, attach Brute Bonnet, poison them, do eight damage counters. GG's, move on. Game over. I, I, I did that one time at locals last week when I played Cloth, and it was glorious. Um, and my I had Mulligan like four times. My opponent definitely could have played around it if they had known, but they didn't know. So I won. Um, and it's great. Um, but yeah, other than that, the deck, like, it can hit like two, it can hit 240. Um, as early as turn one going second. So um, it's a lot to ask for. It can get there, but the Binding Mochi, the Sneasler, uh, with the Poison Damage, you play around Pheasantipity. There's a lot of cool, like, skillful plays you can do. Uh, but the Lugia matchup is definitely, like, the worst matchup in the meta. And right behind it, <clears throat> you would think Terrapagos would be favored because you're fighting. But Terrapagos matchup's, like, very close because of the Dustnor probability that they can do um, and things with that. But um, it's a deck I'm enjoying a lot. The deck we haven't talked about a lot on this podcast at all today is Guardy Bayonet. I don't know how to play it. I'm not good at it, but obviously it's a good deck. And I think right now item lock is very good if you know how to play it. So um, pull up playing one of those two spicy decks and you'll see some success, I think, if you know like, it well enough. I like, I like the cloth spice. One of my favorite lines with like the Petron is like in the Dragapult, you can go hit for, you know, your 170 and then they take the poison damage or you play a mochi so it hits the 240 yeah they ko you but then you promote the baby petron and in between poison, turns they take the eight damage yeah, to exactly knock, then they get knocked out and then you can yeah. promote another cloth or something and just start swinging again yeah so. yeah i was today years old when i realized that cloth actually i'm like, sorry the petron thing actually worked like that you know so i don't practice it enough so i don't know that's why i didn't play it today but it's a good fun deck i think i, I would try it out some more yeah, my fun decks lately have been Goldango and also uh, Palafin EX. Shout out to also, Uncle Jackson for putting the pieces together for me. And Palafin's been a lot of fun, actually. It kind of cooks. Also pretty good cup decks. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's sometimes it's good to play something different because then people, like, they don't know and it tests them a little bit, right? And so that's what I like about those. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would like to say I think Palkia does stand definitely up there, too. Palkia with like Greninja is just it's always like pretty consistent near time turn two. Yeah, the board wide potential of that too. Yeah, you know, a lot of options. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Ban Dusnor. Oh, wait, it didn't make top eight, so it's not that good. And Reggie Drago. <laughs> not next bad. Ban Snorlax. Ban Lugia. No, let's just play Pokemon, guys. Let's ban all rule box cards. <laughs> hey, GLC. No, 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 you'll see. <laughs> Only standard cards. <laughs> best, best deck in format, Honk Helder. <laughs> for real. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Beach Court Podcast. Do have a quick announcement for everyone. Um, we do, we are going to start doing weekly episodes starting now. 
Um, so we had an episode last week and while well, we're here this week and some weeks it, Maddox and Parker may not be here and that's okay. Uh, but we will be doing weekly episodes to bring you more content to this channel. We appreciate all your feedback recently um, and love and support. Please keep pressing the like button, commenting, subscribing. Um, it helps the channel out a lot. Um, next week, I've got Ethan Wilde lined up to talk about Gdansk meta and Lugia because he's been a Lugia head for a long time now since he switched off a of control finally. Um, and he's been doing well with it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll have that next week for you, but that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Beach Court Podcast. Make sure you sign up for Nakamacon and use code BeachCourt at checkout to get $10 off of your two-day gold pass. Um, but we'll talk to you next week to get you ready for Gdansk. Have a good day. Yeah, like have a good dance day. <laughs> have a yeah. good no dance one, No day. one going to Gdansk is listening to this anymore, but if they were, they will not <laughs> tune into next episode. No, you should turn in though. Have a have a good dance, good day. <laughs> See you.